Hi guys, it's Kathy. Welcome to my art channel, Kath Artistry Fluid Art. Today I'm doing a 12 by 36 uh, splash painting. I've already done the background. Uh, I've used for this uh, Deco Art Turquoise and Deco Art Dioxazine Purple with uh, Amsterdam Permanent Red Violet. And here's the Deco Art Copper. Um, you can use a little water to help it to blend together a little better, but a lot of times that makes it a little too thin and you have to use extra coats. Anyway, um, it is what it is. I've got that done, and on the other side I have all the paints I'm using. This one is my concoction. I call it Midnight Blue. It's, it's rather thin. Um, it's a mixture of black and Prussian blue, uh, and I've added some metallic blues to it just a little bit, so when it dries, there's a little bit of sparkle. I don't know if you can see how thin this is. Uh, I mix the paint for the splash only. It's only GAC, two parts GAC to one part paint, and that's it. No Floetrol or anything. However, I've discovered when I've used paints I've already mixed with Floetrol and I add more GAC to it, um, that it works just fine. Uh, this one, what is this? This is, uh, is that blue sapphire? Oh, this is um, Prism Pour Blue Velvet. Also very thin, mixed with GAC. And by the way, uh, GAC 100, which is what I'm using. Where is it here? Here it is, GAC 100 is very good for um, blending pigments. It, it works as a base for the pigments. You would mix the pigment in first, then after it's well, uh, if it's well mixed together, then you can use your Floetrol or mix or whatever else you wanna use with it. And that's the GAC 100. The GAC 800 is more for pores, um, although I haven't used it, so I can't tell you. That's just what I've been told. This is blue sapphire. But it was an older mix, so it does have Floetrol in it. And I added the GAC, uh, but I don't know who makes it. I just had it labeled Blue Sapphire, so I don't know the brand. This is a combination of DecoArt 24 karat gold and Golden's Iridescent Gold Fine. Also pretty thin. And this is a combination of um, Artist Loft's Flow Acrylic White mixed with, um, what is it now? I think, I believe it's, uh, I'm not sure if it's Amsterdam um, Pearl White. So it has a little bit of gloss to it. Anyway, so that's what we're using today. I'm going to do two cups, uh, one for the blowout and one for the fling. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to need two of them or not, but uh, we'll find out. I'm going to start with the midnight blue first. That's the, the Prussian blue with black and some blue metallics. And then this is the Blue Sapphire, I'm sorry, not Blue Sapphire, this is the Prism Pour, um, Blue Velvet, really pretty, pretty, pretty bright blue. This is the Blue Sapphire. A little bit of this gold. and the pearl white. And then we're gonna 
do another layer. And I'm running low here. Air dryer here. It's coming in. It's pretty powerful. I'm going to put it on cool and on high. Now the trick is to drizzle it while you are. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it actually. I'm going to turn it that way. And to blow at it as you drizzle. You don't need to do much with it. So. Pardon the sound of the blow dryer. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> enough for that okay so that's okay then I guess I won't even be used I'll have to do another splash using this extra cup that's okay I have plenty in mind to do so that's it for the blow dry and the, the splash so it's kind of like a splatter and fling so oops So the fling part, and I will switch this again so you can maybe see towards the end, I'm going to try to go up towards that end there. I'm going to have to move this down and see how this works. So Just kind of fling it and let your wrist be a little relaxed and that's it oh i'm i'm pretty happy with the way the flings came out and the splash so the next part is to use a wedge so i don't like this blob here but that's kind of the way it goes I do like that quite a bit i like the colors so we're just going to bring out splashes. I'm wiping the wedge off after each run, each pass through this. This really is fun to do. <laughs> I highly recommend it. Hmm. As thick as this looks, it actually dries pretty quickly. The paint is very thin. Uh, it's the GAC that holds it together, uh, it binds the paint, so it's not going to be like a watercolor, which would just be spreading all over the place. This is kind of a wonky one. Let's see.
And if the, um, the shadow part, the dark parts and the light parts are not to your liking, once it dries, you can go back with those colors and add white or add the darker color you're using to give it a little more definition and depth. And that's pretty easy to do, really. Let's see. This looks a little wonky here. So, just going to try straightening that line out a little bit. <laughs> Not much better. Again, if it doesn't work, I can always come back once it's dry and go over it. I will probably have to do, but that's somewhat better. some air bubbles in it because I I didn't wait long enough after I mixed the paints together for them to settle down so I will have to torch it. We don't want to have air bubbles in the paint because when, when it dries it's going to be real craters. However, with this type of technique, uh, that doesn't really matter much. Oh shit, I just spilled paint all over the place. Oh well. Uh, I saw a goober here. I don't like the goobers. I will just leave that and paint over it later. made a huge mess. <laughs> anyway, and that I think is pretty much it. I said it is fun once you get started on it. And it's going to go wherever it wants to go. So you don't have too much control over that. I'm just looking a little bit more to see if there's anything else I want to do with the wedge. I'm seeing more air bubbles come up. And I like the splatter behind there. I like this big spot here and the colors that blend. I had I wondered about using the gold. I wasn't too sure about it, but I kind of like it in here. It adds a little difference than just, you know, the various shades of blues. I think maybe I'll bring that that way. And bring this one that way a little bit. So that big glomp right there works pretty well with the wedge for making it look like a splash is coming from somewhere.
The other thing about using the wedge in this area is it will dissipate the paint a little bit. So um, it will thin out a little bit more as you spread it. Well, I think I'm good. See anything else I should do? I know you can't answer me, but there's a little one right there. Just do it that way. Yeah, just a little extra touch-ups with the wedge, and that's all you need. So that's it. Uh, it's pretty easy once you get the background done and you get all the colors mixed and and you splatter and fling. <laughs> it's a splatter and fling technique, I suppose. But I prefer to call it a splash. Anyway, uh, that's it. If you have any questions, just let me know down below. Um, I'll list my colors and the recipes down below as well. And thank you so much for joining me on this adventure here, my splashy adventure. I uh, will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, so here is a close-up. It's not that you see any great cells in it or wonderful lines like you would with a straight pour or a wing pour. But you can see how that splatter goes out and the flings and how well the paint using the GAC holds its shape. This is very thin. Actually, it's a little thinner than I have been doing, but it's still going to hold the shape. I hope you enjoy this. Bye.